Hello and welcome to GUTV. I am Daniel Serpy. Last night on the Ask Professor Dan show, we asked our viewers to select one of three questions to be answered on tonight's show. Due to the realistic nature of our question, it is apparent that our viewers would like to hear the answer to, is Gonzaga prepared for an on-campus shooting? Unfortunately, this topic has become increasingly more relevant. It is something that has generated worldwide discussion, but now we have an opportunity to talk about this issue amongst the Gonzaga community. As of now, the answer to this question is no, simply because of a lack of communication with the administration, faculty, staff, and the Gonzaga students. It is our hope that in these next 30 minutes, we will be able to bridge this gap and provide the Gonzaga community with the insight necessary to combat this issue together. In our country, mass shootings have impacted the lives of so many innocent people. School shootings alone have only multiplied and show no signs of slowing down. There are many notable shootings that have brought about heightened awareness about this issue. One with local ties was the shooting at a Moses Lake Middle School in February of 1996. From there, it is the unfortunate household names like Columbine, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook Elementary School, UC Santa Barbara, and just this year, Umpqua Community College in Oregon, as well as Northern Arizona University. As this issue continues to intensify, students' feelings of being protected are a top priority. Reporter Nina Braddock went out to get the students' opinions on whether or not they feel safe on campus if a shooting were to occur. So in light of all the recent campus shootings that have been happening all over the country, do you think Gonzaga is prepared? Well, I mean, we have a certainly a good uh, campus police force. Uh, I believe that the Spokane Police Department is pretty good, but I don't know about any sort of protocols that we have. In the case of shooting, I would have no idea what to do. Yeah, I feel like I honestly would have no idea how to handle that or no. like what to do, where to go. Um, I think with the new Hemmingson building, we're prepared of like lockdown drills and getting that settled. Um, I think as a student, like wide campus, I'm not so sure yet. Um, just because with the bomb threat last year, we had some struggles trying to get people secure in their dorms and people didn't quite get the message of what was happening. Mm -hmm. So I think if we figure out like the Zag alert and making sure everyone is um, sort of aware of their surroundings and I think we might be prepared. Um, I think Gonzaga is not very prepared. We do have our Zag alert program and that has seemed to work but at some times pretty spotty. Personally I think I've had enough training but I don't think everybody has the same training as I do as an ARD and I've been an RA for two or three years. So. I think having some sort of a, a drill would be nice because we do have fire drills and I think it would be reasonable to have sort of that drill also. I think we have good procedures to keep us safe, like uh, stay in place, and I think that would keep us safe, but I think no one could be really fully prepared for something like that. I feel pretty safe here. I think we're pretty prepared, especially because last year we had like a little bit of that small um, threat and I think last year people weren't super happy so I think this year we've stepped it up and like tried to reevaluate some safety concerns. Are you signed up for Zagalor? Yes I am. Okay. I think, I yeah I am. Don't know if I am actually. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah my mom had me do that. <laughs> yeah I am. I am not actually. Yeah. So I... I am not. I will admit but I need to be. I keep on pressing remind me later but I need to remind myself later to do. Institutions across the nation are beginning to take increased safety measures to ensure the protection of their students, faculty, and staff. Reporter Kennedy McGann sat down with the Vice President of Student Development, Dr. Judy Biggs Garbuglio, to discover the strategies Gonzaga has put in place in case of an active shooter. In the event of a crisis, um, what would you be doing? Um, because campus security reports directly to me, typically I would be the first person that the director of campus security would call uh, that there is some type of an event happening on campus. I would then inform the president and then members of cabinet to convene. Simultaneously, the director of security would be the incident commander and would be pulling together the team to handle the incident at hand. Okay, so um, can we prepare for the unexpected at Gonzaga? That is our hope of what yes. we're trying to do. Um, part of what we've been able to do, I know that there have been some issues with Zag Alert, and I think that we have 
fine-tuned all of the issues of SAG Alert, so that's up and running. So that would be the best way for us to communicate to the general university community. As long as students have signed up for SAG Alert, okay. that's the big component. It's Got an it. opt-in. Um, so that's one thing. The Hemmingson Center, when it before it was fully operational, we actually did an active shooter training for all of the staff members that have offices within the Hemmingson. Mm -hmm. So that is our one building that has been yes. fully trained in that. We also are, during this next uh, semester, the plan is to do that type of training within all of the buildings on campus. Okay, wonderful. Now what can students do to prepare for a school shooting? I think that, the, well, I know there's a great video on the campus security website to help educate on what are some of the things that you can do. Um, we do have in all of the classrooms and within the residence halls what to do in case of an active shooter. Specifically, those are all those directions are all posted within the classrooms or within the residence halls. Mm -hmm. So become fami familiar with what that is. Yeah. Um, so I think education mm -hmm. and trying to educate yourself once again through the video that's up on campus security or to pay closer attention to what's posted in the classrooms. Definitely. Um, now we had a bomb threat in um, September of 2014. Um, how did the school handle that and have you improved on um, maybe what steps were taken? I think we have a lot of lessons learned from that and I think once again that's where we realized that there were some issues that needed to be resolved with SAG Alert, mm -hmm. and so we've resolved that. Some other things that we put in place, we now have a persona electronic key system to lock down all of the buildings at once, okay. which we haven't had. So we took that incident and put uh, we always do an after action review, and a lot of the recommendations from that we have continued to implement. Do we have lockdown drills um, at Gonzaga for students who are in class um, in session during the semester? We haven't, but I know that that is uh, in the works to have okay. happen. In our residence halls, we, that, we do pretty regular drills in regards mm -hmm. to that. Okay, wonderful. Um, and then is there a real threat here at Gonzaga? <laughs> I think there's always a threat. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that's also new this semester, we've implemented what's called a behavioral intervention team. It's called mm -hmm. BIT. And so uh, Scott Snyder, who's the director of security, and Eric Baldwin, the dean of well-being and healthy living, are co-chairing that. And what the intent of that is, if there's an incident, let's say that a faculty member is going through a divorce mm -hmm. and their partner is really upset about it, we would now have a place to put all of that information and then they do a threat assessment. What's the likelihood that this person will act upon their threats? And so we now have that in place for both faculty, okay. staff, and students. It's truly great to see that the Gonzaga administration is proactive about this serious problem. Coming up after the break, we'll send it over to Nina Braddock in the Opila Suite, where she will introduce us to the brave men and women who keep our campus safe, as well as the evacuation plans that prepare us for an active shooting situation. You're watching GUTV. So Gonzaga Without Borders is a student-run club that helps people across the world meet their primary needs, such as water, food, and shelter. In the future, we're looking at uh, going with the school in, on their projects in Benin, hopefully Zambia, and we're currently trying to work with the Indian Health Services here in Spokane and Idaho. So having someone else in a different major uh, can give a different perspective that could totally change the project or make it a lot better.
Amen. Welcome back to GUTV. I'm Nina Braddock. Tonight's show is aimed at answering the question, is Gonzaga prepared for an on-campus shooting? Before we answer that, let's go back and take a look at some of the brave men and women who are here every day to help keep us safe. Gonzaga's very own campus security. Samantha Takazawa has the story. Underneath Welch Hall lives the offices of Gonzaga's Campo. Well, campus security is uh, an agency, it's a private security department that is employed by Gonzaga University to basically create a safe climate for living and learning. Campo is known around GU for its escort services, key services, and controls key card access across campus. But what do the students have to say about them? I think campus security isn't as prevalent on campus as I would like. I feel like I don't see them walking around campus as often as other schools, but I do think that I'm safe and I know that they're there. Campo officers are always nearby for assistance, placed strategically across the Gonzaga campus. So we deploy our officers in a geographic pattern. That's to make sure that we have coverage. We actually have eyes and ears in different sections of campus. When we have two officers on, we have an east and a west beat. When we have three or more officers on, we divide our campus into three uh, specific sections that include a mixture of academic and uh, dormitory living. Not only are they close by, but they are definitely qualified for the job as well. So we select uh, from a list of, of interested applicants based on their life's experiences. Most of them have either prior law enforcement experience and or security experience or military experience that's relevant to uh, providing security work and dealing firsthand with, with crisis. They also must show that they can fit in well with the Gonzaga community and are approachable to students. Yeah, very approachable. When I see them outside, wherever, I usually say hi or like, how's your day? Just normal dudes. Whether on campus or off, Campo will always be there for the faculty, staff, and students of Gonzaga University. Samantha Takizawa, GUTV. Gonzaga University's webpage has a lot of information on what to do in case of certain crises. Campus Security and Public Safety has a whole page on what to do if there's an active shooter on campus. The first thing that they recommend doing, though, before anything else happens, is signing up for Zag Alert. It takes two minutes. You just sign right into Zag Web, click on the Zag Alert, and then you go in and enter your information. They'll send you emails, they can call your, your cell phone, or they can also text you. So you will know what's going on at every time of an emergency. There's also a campus uh, informational video on what to do if there is a shooter on campus. So it's about 20 minutes long. I'd say go to the website, give that a check, look it out. Um, and every single building on campus also has an evacuation plan. This evacuation plan for the law school shows that there are two primary locations and one secondary location. Primary locations being if you need to get out of the building, go straight to the parking lot or go a little bit farther to the baseball stadium. But if you need to get even further than that, head straight to the Martin Center. On the main floor of um, the law building, there's a bunch of different exits. Make sure you take the nearest exit to you. Also, there are first aid kits and defibrillators in case something were to happen. The New Hemmingson building also has a lot of uh, evacuation plans, and um, this includes evacuating first to either in front of Foley or to the parking garage over in front of Madonna, um, or if you have to get further away, go to the McCarthy Athletic Center. And here um, on the main floor, there's also first aid kits and defibrillators in case something were to happen. But if you are inside a building, get somewhere where it's safe and secure. That means go into a room, a classroom, an office, whatever you need to do, lock the door, hide, uh, close the windows, turn off the lights, lay down on the ground if you need to, be quiet and calm, and um, just call 911. 
It's the first thing you do is you call 911 and then call Campo. Um, in the case of an emergency, police need to arrive on the scene before anything else happens and um, in order to ensure that you're safe. So follow some of these guidelines and stay safe, Gonzaga. And when we come back from the break, uh, Daniel and Serpy will be talking with a sociology professor and GSBA president in order to figure out how students and staff can work together. This is GUTV. Welcome back to GUTV. I'm Daniel Nserpi. Tonight's show is aimed to answer the question, is Gonzaga prepared for an on-campus shooting? Before we get back to answering that question, it's important to be introduced to two wonderful people that can really help us get this conversation going with our GSBA president, Taylor Craddeville, as well as Gonzaga's sociology and criminal justice professor, Dr. Weatherby. Thank you both for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Weatherby, you have um, been involved in an extensive kind of research into this whole um, shooting phenomenon. You've had a lot of art articles published. What has kind of been the biggest reason why you have pursued this topic? Well, the catalyst really came about when I came to Gonzaga in about 1996. I started being very interested in bullying, why people are bullied and also social isolation and why people respond the way they do to social isolation. The implications future long term have been in terms of academic performance and have been in terms of social relations and also in terms of physical health because we know what stress does to the body. Most people react inwardly. In some heinous cases, they react outwardly and campus shootings occur, and that led to my interest in studying those in a very systematic way to try to understand how to lessen and hopefully prevent them in the future. And then how do you think that your expertise and your knowledge can um, help make an impact on our community? Well, I have some advice for faculty and students, and I share that with my students in the class. 
They're very interested about what we do in terms of preparedness. If there's an aggressor on the campus, I teach in College Hall for the most part, and if there's someone in the hall, what we do to lock things down, to turn lights, to barricade, which our doors open out so we lock them. We're quiet. I can summon authorities on the phone that we have in each room. Students get under the desks and we do what we need to do. Faculty are very interested in those procedures because they're not all that sure about what to do. And our student safety is our priority and it comes as number one. Absolutely. And, and the students are definitely going to look to the faculty to kind of look, little, know a little bit more what to do and to hope, hope to be a little bit more comfortable. Now, Taylor, for you as GSPA president, I know that when you ran last year, a lot of your running points uh, were focused on safety and kind of concern with the community. Where does this kind of issue of uh, you know, school shootings kind of fit in with um, your goals as president? Well, I think it, it more than anything, it's facilitating conversation. Um, I think that a lot of times we feel right at home with NGU. Uh, and while that's fantastic, we need to recognize that there are potential issues um, that obviously could affect our community for the worse. So I think it's being able to facilitate conversation and make sure that we are prepared. So that's everything from being open to having a forum of discussion and being able to talk about safety on campus, or if that's being open to uh, implementing something along the lines of a safety app on campus. So uh, that we make sure that our students are safe no matter what, and that we're safe, and that our faculty and staff are safe in the event uh, that really could never be predicted, but something that we need to be prepared for nonetheless. And you just mentioned that safety app. Obviously, with where we're at now with technology, that's a huge thing. And having something like that could greatly benefit our campus. Um, could you kind of explain a little bit more about what that app is about and kind of um, your, your process with trying to get it to start? Yeah, you know, absolutely. So right now what we have are, is our blue light system. We were talking a little bit about it before cutting in here. Um, and. I think it's, we're at a point uh, that we really need to be able to utilize the technology that we have. Um, and essentially, if we were able to institute something along the lines of a safety app, and we had student and faculty and staff buy-in, we could essentially have a blue light in everybody's pocket. Um, and that would be a really unique transition, because as of right now, we have blue lights outside. We have telephones in the classroom. Um, but to the extent that uh, tools like Zagalert are being used, if we were able to expand that and make the safety app a um, mass notification system as well as a preventative measure uh, where it could be something as little as a panic button or something more ornate where it would be able to send your GPS location to campus security um, and the police force for that matter. So I think that being able to see what fits into our Gonzaga community is key. So. Uh, being able to have discussions, and if students have ideas, bring those to the staff and faculty or to GSPA, or just having conversations amongst friends to see what we can do in order to make this community as safe and prepared as we can be. Right, and you, you touched on the conversations. Right. Dr. Weatherly, what do you think that, um, how do you think that students can continue to impact to this campus about this matter, and faculty, how, how can they collaborate together? Well, I think it's just superb that Taylor has spent his four years here working on these issues, that they are at the forefront of his agenda in GSBA and just personally for him. I think he's a great role model for others. I think that we can facilitate conversations in our classes. It's easier for me to do in CRIM. I teach a lot of CRIM classes like criminal law and I teach sociology, deviant behavior and other things like that. But all classes could incorporate something in where students maybe get into groups and work on solving problems because we're about solving problems, not just identifying problems but solving them as a group because that's what I want people to go out and do in the world. And so we should have those discussions in class in, uh, with resident hall assistants and aides and in all ways possible. And always keep it a conversation that is growing and flowing and brainstorming because the best work I do is with other people and it would be the same with students. 
And, and with, your, with your knowledge and your obvious concerns that have kind of been brought about when we talked earlier, how have you kind of brought those concerns to the administration to try and get that change really going and have you seen those results? Virginia Tech occurred in 2007 in April and I'd always been concerned because of my, the center of my research is, is based on, on this work as well. But that really brought it home. I have a friend who teaches there. I was in contact with him just to see if he was alive and, and well. And then I really started to bring things forward. I wanted lockdowns on the doors. And I know from, as I'm also a mock trial coach head, so at night at 10 o'clock, all the doors would lock down and we couldn't get in and, and we could get out, but not in. And so I knew that that was possible to do. So I talked to security about it and apparently it was, it was really complex and they weren't sure. And I was just looking at the administration building, which is now College Hall. So I kept pushing for it and also blinds on the doors and for offices and especially classrooms and the ability to dim the lights and the phones and all of that. Those things came slowly. The locks came last, amazingly. But recently, I was in a class. I wasn't told. I looked over and saw a little manual lock on the door, and I was so thrilled. So I talked about it in the class. I went over and used it. It's something we can do. It doesn't have to be done computerized or campus-wide or whatever. But everyone needs to know they're there. They're very tiny and hard to see. So you turn that lock, you pull those shades, you dim those lights, you get the kids under the furniture, you summon the authorities, you make no noise, and you hope that the aggressor moves elsewhere and is apprehended. And we minimize any damage. And, and that has come slowly, but I started a long time ago, just like you did, and I'm so happy to have made the strides we've made and to have been safe in the meantime that we've been able to uh, be a, a very safe campus. And Taylor, for you, in your four years of kind of having a, a big leadership position on campus, what kind of changes have you been able to notice? Well, yeah, and I think those trends can be seen throughout all of the administration. Um, and we've heard from Director Snyder a bit ago. Uh, Scott Snyder has been pivotal to a lot of the changes that have been taking place, and a lot of the conversations that have been taking place. Um, People like Dr. Big Scarbuio, President McCullough, um, Dr. Killen, being able to have these conversations and being taken seriously, I've been blown away. Um, even just little suggestions that have been made that I've heard from a student and in passing mentioned it to uh, an administrator and say, hey, this was an idea I had been hearing. Uh, and for them to take it seriously, and I have other administrators approach me and say, hey, I heard there's this idea going on. Uh, what are your thoughts? Should we really institute this? Um, I've been blown away. And when we have uh, active shooter drills on campus, I was over uh, working in Hemmingson over the summer, and there was an active shooter drill. And I was kind of awestruck because I, I, I've, I've never seen that on this campus and I think that's a good barometer to see where we're at as a university um, and be able to see that we are moving towards being able to uh, make a big change. That's great. The, the, the change is huge and such a big part of that is the conversation we're able to have with faculty and with students. So I really appreciate both of you for joining us tonight. You've made a great impact on the show. At the beginning of the show, we had answered no to our original question. But after hearing from what our administration has put in place and the willingness of our students to be informed, we have the ability to change that answer to yes, but only if we are willing to act. So sign up for Zag Alert, keep the conversation going, and remember, it is the school-wide effort and must be done together. From all of us here at GUTV, we thank you for choosing this question and allowing us to inform you about a very important topic. Coming up next on GUTV, Find out about the hidden gem Spokane has to offer. What's up, Gun? 509 Finds. I'm Daniel Serpy saying good night and thank you for watching.